name is Jay Alexander and I'm a lighting designer. I work for Microcraft Studio. Uh, my name is Florence Lamb. I'm a lighting designer with Arab. Uh, I'm Alejandra Escobedo. I'm a stage lighting designer. Hi, my name is Nayan and I'm an artist. So my name is Francesco Anselmo. I work as a lighting and interaction designer. Light is a way of thinking for me. For me, light is a immateriality between physical and your experience. So I always talk about light as being like an atmosphere or a, a, a texture around us. And being here on Mount Fuji is completely evident of this. And as the mist moves around us, the atmosphere and the moments change. And um, yeah, I think it's, for me, it's a, like an immaterial architecture. It's something that is not tangible in, a, in, in so many ways. And not many people have a language for it to be able to talk so fluently about it. And I think that's kind of one of the mystical and amazing things about it is that it's quite yeah, unspoken but exists. Light is uh, um, everything we know um, about our you know, dimension, our life. We know it because of light. Uh, so it's, uh, it's the thing that really transcends uh, um, you know, us, uh, our thoughts. Um, it is uh, information that comes from, uh, from the stars down to us. It, kind of, it, it lets us uh, understand what the universe is and you know, we find it really everywhere. It's communication, you know, um, you know, us communicating from one side of the uh, planet to another one through you know, fiber optic cables as an example. So it is something that is very practical, but it's something as well that is very um, transcendental. It's important to get out and about and see new things and experience in new places and things you don't really know and you haven't really felt before because otherwise you can't really stimulate your brain to open new channels into things that you wouldn't otherwise think of. It's very easy to get stuck and to see things on the screens but it's the reality that gives you the most impulses and it might not be that they hit you now when you're there but it's like later when they come back as flashbacks or things you can think about in the future. But over the times with work, the pace got faster and faster, and almost all experience about projects, when it's, uh, it is a very early creative stage of design or delivering stage of design, the pace has got so much faster that you stop thinking because you've done it before, and there's a simple way. And by stepping back and this opportunity of taking time away, and suddenly your eyes start to see a lot more things deeper. More than important, I think it's necessary. I just can't figure out designing without having that time to observe, analyze, <laughs> do all that. It's important for everybody to look and to keep looking and I guess if this is a method this is to remind ourselves to keep looking. I like moments where the atmosphere, the place and the people and everything comes together and makes a new moment in your mind or your experience that's positive and something you can hold on to. It should be something like a beautiful chapter in a book or a 
beautiful section of a film where you just feel kind of immersed into that moment and something you can keep for yourself. It's a moment that um, comes as an emotion, I think, uh, that um, is, yeah, I guess, linking uh, all your senses, obviously comes more as, uh, as vision. I think because most of us actually live in non-natural environments, I think people would be more impressed by cityscapes if they lived in non-city environments and did actually live in the wilderness. So I think we're actually looking at the opposite emotion of going back to these places, seeing nature, feeling nature's environments. You might only see a sunset three, four times a month. You might not you know, be able to see it or the weather's not great, but when you're within the landscape, you always kind of experience and feel those emotions. The reason why daylight referenced a lot it's in terms of inspiration is because it's so unpredictable sometimes and how the contrast itself, the layer of the light is something that you almost have learned through observation. It's our main source, and it's our it's our everyday and from centuries and history. That's our first idea of light. You wake up and say it's the sunlight, like you know. So natural light is just in this very, very thin uh, layer. However, for us it's bigger, uh, because we're just inside it. Uh, and so that's how we experience it, because it's very emotional, because it's with the full bodies. We work in light in the most diverse way, from natural to artificial, but also what we uh, particularly strong is also is looking at the technology and also the future of technology and what light can do to people in space is what we'll say but to me as a designer I see light as a very fundamental media that I can be creative about that I can take all the others kind of commercial elements the visibility almost aside but actually imagine by playing with light and learning how the light interact with different finishes, materials, over time and observing like today was a great opportunity. I don't have those kind of moments that I can just not in a rush for anything, not meeting a deadline and just be there, observe with my eyes and take in what I see and try to make sense of what I'm seeing as well. The quality of light on Fuji was amazing, the fact that we were in between drifting clouds and the light is caught between the clouds, you can't see things, you can see things. And I think that becomes something that it's only in your experience and that moment of the lighting. I don't really see it as like the light hit the surface and I got a reflection, but this is more like if you looked away from the group and you looked away from the moment, a kind of passing of cloud and light, that I think is something that's beautiful with that. An experience like we're having right now, where nature is doing its best to either confound us or be flat, is an interesting way of thinking about what we desire for this moment and what the moment's prepared to give us. Walking with my mother and my wife on Hove Seafront, which is very unremarkable, and everything disappeared in mist. Now the mist itself was special and lovely, but it was more to do with 
how we were in a crowd and then suddenly we're on our own and the light contribute the light showed us why the sound was disappearing so it wasn't so everything was removed so light and matter removed everything other than the three of us sound was gone view was vision was impaired if you like and you were kind of on your own in a cloud It wasn't a great sunset in terms of, you know, mm. those, those spectacle sun, sunset, but very, very clearly said, I really like, I want to see those colour changes, those things, the phenomena change. That's what I'm, that's what I'm looking at. I look at the sky, show pictures, look at the trees, look at pictures. That's the normal way. And as you walk more, there's only so much of the same scene that you can do. And you start to look for different and new things. And one of the moments that transpired was how the light from the sky was brought down, not just itself traveling through air, but it's the trunk. The trunk of these trees was much lighter color and how there's from the between the leaves as you draw the light down and the trunk becomes a almost a light channel to bring it down there and that's what makes the whole scene so interesting. Once I got to see the firefly and really experience it, one of them actually got quite close to me on hand. Yes, that's the where the darkness wanders. It's not just saying in light and shadows, but when the complete darkness is what we design for the night, we start with a black canvas and we chose what to light and it's when you can start layers. you are in light which is moving off water you have removed your clothes you have cleansed the body to be immersed in a fluid that's about body temperature and your body produces a play of light coming down into this bay and being really close to the water while the sun was really low and everything glistening perfectly at the perfect angle so that you just get perfect mixture of blue and then the reflection of the sun coming back up and it was such a complicated pattern with the texture and the movement of the sea that it was just some kind of like beautiful artwork in itself and something you can't ever chat you could never recreate as a human and you could never think to even illustrate as a human it's something you can only just take in for what it is
there are a few things that really fascinate me about the way uh, lighting is resolved in Japan, especially day lighting. So in Italy, things become quite complex uh, when you have to deal with shading, while in Japan it's so simple, it's just uh, you know, washi paper, it's just a sheet of paper that then transforms uh, uh, the filtering. Uh, and, and I think that's uh, maybe um, what I can see is, uh, is a different sensibility to solving maybe similar problems uh, with a totally different perspective. The materials of the house were quite dark and so the sort of interplay with light uh, was uh, maybe different than uh, most of western places I would say so it's all, almost designed for uh, ambience for uh, uh, sort of atmospheric effects uh, and uh After seeing the two sequences of the work with a very short period of sleep in between two kinds of events of light, it was curious to me that um, it was going outside into the early morning sun, which was surprisingly early and surprisingly strong. And because of its strength, the house, the structure became dark in a way that hadn't been even when we, it was dark outside. It became dark and it became twice, two, two buildings, as so the building um, looking uh, towards the rising sun on the left, which was low ceiling, dark, shadowed, much more like the articulation in the first 10 pages of uh, In Praise of Shadows. So problematic, but very kind of compelling, sumptuous, um, warm, diffused. Um, and then to the right were the vestiges of the event of the morning show of um, the sky becoming object was still retinally uncomfortable and by me by me that it was bright in the way that in praise of shadows is a philosophical uh, description of shadow light and other things combined I feel like what I've learned from my experience here is that shadow and light is also moments between people, moments between something happening, moments that you didn't expect to happen and you weren't sure, and kind of sharing and enjoying them with other people that are really passionate about the same subject. What I enjoyed the most is how the house is embraced with light naturally and artificially speaking and how it's combined to have an, a complete experience. I think that was beautiful, 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 beautiful. You, you, you could definitely feel, see, uh, sense how it was work, how a, a house was think only to the purpose to have an experience experience with light that was amazing. I, 
I know there's been exhibitions or installations and all, but having a space particularly to, to lead that experience, I think it's great. What is it that's making us say, and of course the artificial, is something either less or seeking to be that which it can never be. I think that's like really fun is the fact that, I don't know, just starting to feel now that this feels like the end of a pilgrimage of light. We've come so far to get here. Yes. And now we're just ha in a house and we're enjoying light. Like yes. we would be at home and we could watch all the light we want on TV. Exactly. <laughs> but we're enjoying this immersive artificial light, but with a natural sw twist to it. Exactly. And I think that's like, yeah, it feels like some kind of like staple moment. The whole trip has been a great light experience. I couldn't think of a place where in a very short time gave me the very extreme experience of light. One really amazing moment was just waking up next to other people staring up at an open roof and just staring at the sky and looking around and thinking to myself, instead of enjoying this experience everyone else is looking and taking pictures of, enjoying the moment of everyone looking at it and taking pictures and going, holy moly, this is really something else and something quite cool.